Good morning and a happy and blessed Easter to all of you, members of our First Lutheran Church family watching from home and all the other brothers and sisters in Christ who are joining us on this day. And at this time, we'd like to invite you to rise as we begin by singing hymn number 457, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. There is fullness of joy. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For the peace won for all people by Christ our Lord through his death and resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from on high brought near by the blood of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace on earth and among God's people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in this congregation and in the hearts of all who offer now their worship and praise, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious, risen Lord Jesus. Amen. Son to death on the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of the enemy. 
Grant that all our sin may be put to death through daily repentance, and that day by day we may arise to live before you in righteousness and purity forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meals and the finest of wines. On this mountain he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove his people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. In that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than five hundred of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for our Gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory, glory, glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone, because they were afraid. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. At this time, we join in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And we now continue by singing stanzas 1, 2, 5, 7, and 8 of hymn number 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
and it all happened to your great glory. And so we pray that your Holy Spirit would speak now through this message to remind us how true that is on this Easter Sunday. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I recently read an article in the Washington Examiner, and the title of the article was Easter and Passover Canceled. Coronavirus pandemic upends ancient traditions. Easter canceled. You know, in the minds of many, that seems to be a popular way of thinking, a popular sentiment these days. Something like, oh man, look at all the churches that won't get to celebrate Easter this year. Or look at all the ways we won't get to celebrate Easter this year. No Easter egg hunts this year. No new Easter clothes. No big family Easter gatherings. No big church Easter gatherings. Coronavirus has ruined everything. It's the Grinch that stole Easter. For the first time in our lifetime, Easter has been canceled. Easter has been canceled. You strip away all the stuff that we're used to celebrating this time of year and suddenly you're left with nothing? Suddenly you're left with meaninglessness? At least that seems to be a popular sentiment. And to an extent, brothers and sisters, this attitude is just a small snapshot of how many people approach and see life in general. What I mean is, for many people, life is only as meaningful as the stuff that makes life worth living, makes life worth celebrating. We're already seeing it right now, before Easter even rolled around, for example. It's kind of thinking that says, oh man, we're all stuck in quarantine now, and for who knows how long. I've lost my ability to socialize with my friends face to face. I've lost my ability to eat out at my favorite restaurants whenever I want to. I've lost my ability to go out to the movies or go on that vacation that we were planning or go out and do anything fun, really. Now my life just feels so meaningless. Nothing seems to bring me satisfaction. Nothing seems to bring me fulfillment anymore. Or, it's in people who might think something like, well, my life has felt like such a rut, honestly, long before this quarantine ever even began. My life has felt like every day is just the same old job, the same work, the same chores when I'm at home, the same thankless tasks, the same thankless marriage, nothing really to look forward to any day before this quarantine ever began. My life just feels so meaningless. Nothing seems to bring me satisfaction. Nothing seems to bring me fulfillment anymore, anyhow. Or switching gears is a kind of mindset that says, you know, I'm getting up there in years, and let me tell you, aging is not for the faint of heart. You know, back when I was young, yeah, life was good. I didn't have all these constant aches and pains to deal with. I didn't have to worry about things like falling. My mobility was good. My sleep quality at night was good. There weren't the constant surgeries and pains and procedures, and now I just wonder, why is God even keeping now my life feels so meaningless. 
Nothing seems to bring me satisfaction. Nothing seems to bring me fulfillment anymore. In many ways, all these kinds of sentiments sound a lot like King Solomon, actually, in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, where he says, When I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. And so I hated life. All of life's temporal pleasures ultimately failed to satisfy Solomon. Ultimately failed to bring lasting meaning to Solomon's life. And in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapters 1 and 2 are just the beginning. He goes on to list all the different kinds of temporal pleasures in which he indulged, and all of them failing to bring lasting meaning to his life. Not riches, not palaces, not servants, not wives, not food, not learning and education, not pets, not grand projects, not partying. He tried it all, all the stuff, and it all failed. Stuff ultimately failed to bring Solomon's life meaning. Sounds a lot like our predicament and struggle, right? And the kinds of sentiments I was talking about. And yet, even Solomon didn't stop there. And Ecclesiastes is arguably one of the most depressing books in the entire Bible. Solomon may have been wise enough to see that none of life's temporal pleasures is capable of bringing lasting fulfillment, but even Solomon doesn't stop there. It's in the opening verse of his final chapter, the turning point of the book there at the end, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1, he says, Therefore, remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you'll say, I find no pleasure in Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the days of trouble come. See, Solomon was wise enough to see something that we now see all the more clearly as Christians looking back. Solomon knew that our creator is eternal, and thus, life with our Creator, it stands to reason, is the only thing that brings lasting meaning, the only thing that lasts eternal. Fulfillment. This can be found in life with our Creator. Meaning. Lasting meaning. This can be found in life with our Creator. Solomon, in other words, saw from a distance, dimly, the lasting fulfillment and the lasting meaning that Jesus Christ would fully win for us and for all humanity on that first Easter Sunday. Solomon saw from a distance, dimly, the eternal significance that Easter would bring to all who put their faith in Jesus Christ. If anyone thinks that Easter has been canceled this year, it's not because Easter has actually been canceled, our celebration of it. It's because they never really understood Easter and what it is that we're really celebrating on Easter in the first place. They never really understood Easter in the first place. 
which probably shouldn't surprise me too much because half the time, honestly, I'm not even sure that many Christians understand what we're really celebrating on Easter in the first place either. Sometimes we can be just as bad as the world in terms of losing our focus. You know, so often I hear Christians talking about all of the good things that we should be doing, as well as all the bad things we should be avoiding if we're Christ followers. For example, are you reading your Bible as much as you should? Are you giving to the needy as much as you should? Are you telling others about Jesus as much as you should? Are you sacrificing your comforts for others as much as you should? Are you caring for the lonely and downtrodden as much as you should? And you might be puzzled and might be thinking, well, what's wrong with those things, Pastor? You tell us to do that stuff too, don't you? I mean, and aren't those all ways for us to love God and love our neighbor? Yeah, absolutely. But without the cross of Good Friday, which led to the empty tomb of Easter, none of these righteous deeds, none of these religious works would mean anything. We could do all these works until we were blue in the face and we would still be just as hellbound as if we hadn't done any of them. We would still just be as lost in sin as if we hadn't done any of them. Only the cross and empty tomb of Christ could rescue us from eternal damnation, sin, and death, and cross us over from death to life. But without the cross of Good Friday and the empty tomb of Easter, these religious works would be just as meaningless for us and for others, for those we serve, as the stuff of this life would be meaningless because none of them would have any lasting meaning beyond this life. Brothers and sisters, hear me when I say that these kinds of righteous deeds, these kinds of religious works do bring meaning to our lives, but only because Jesus has won for us and won for all humankind peace with God through the cross of Good Friday, forgiveness of sins, and only because Jesus has won for us and won for all humankind eternal life that can never perish through the empty tomb of Easter. So that these kinds of religious works, these kinds of righteous deeds now do bring meaning to our lives and the lives of others in so far as they point others to the life that is truly life that Jesus Christ has won for us through Easter. And that is why we celebrate Easter. The eternal life that Jesus has won for us in the new heavens and new earth that he has secured for us through Easter. So in that sense, now there is meaning. Every act of love in his name, every act of witness in his name, now has the chance to bear eternal fruit, now has the chance to be eternally meaningful, has the chance to lead yet another life to the life that is truly life, but it's all only made possible by the cross and empty tomb of Easter. And what will that life look like? What kind of life is it that our Savior has won for us through his own resurrection and empty tomb? The only life and the only place that will never, 
never again disappoint. That will never ever again feel meaningless. That will never ever again end. Though our bodies in this life will taste death, because Jesus our Savior has risen from death, because Jesus our Savior has conquered death in doing so, because death had no right to him, he was sinless, because Jesus our Savior has risen from death, now we await our risen Savior, who, when he returns for us, as Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, will resurrect and transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious resurrected body, imperishable. When, as Paul also writes in 1 Thessalonians 4, the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ, will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. And not just in the clouds, not just in the air to stay, not just in this veil of tears, this veil of disappointment to stay. But as the Apostle John was allowed to see from a distance dimly in Revelation 21, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling place of God is with people, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, Look, I am making everything new. Our Savior has won for us through his empty tomb the only life in the only bodies in the only place that will never, ever again disappoint. That will never, ever again feel meaningless. That will never, ever again end. So Easter has been canceled this year? I think not. And I think not any year until our Savior comes again. If anything, brothers and sisters, this might be one of the purest, most distraction-free Easter's that many of us have ever celebrated in our lives. This might be one of the most Christ-centered Easter's that many of us have ever celebrated in our lives. An Easter where our biggest reason to celebrate is and remains with laser sharp focus the fact that we will not all sleep in death but we will all be changed in a flash in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed and when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? 
The sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is risen. He is risen indeed. This Easter and every Easter. Alleluia. Amen. And now we join in singing stanzas one through four of hymn number 467, Awake My Heart With Glad.
Good Shepherd, we pray for all pastors in Christ that they may constantly speak the good news of your victory over sin, death, and the devil. Strengthen them through your death and resurrection to serve you as faithful stewards of the holy mysteries for the good of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Victorious Lord, we ask your mercy upon all who are in authority in our land and around the world. For those who serve in all branches of government, the military, law enforcement, relief and rescue agencies, and all civil servants, that you would grant them wisdom and obedience to carry out your purposes on the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living Jesus, we hold before you those who are sick, injured, grieving, or in any kind of need. And we pray especially today for Don Fulker, John Ross, Lisa Whitfold, Pete Charlton, all those who are suffering from the coronavirus, and Bob and Barb Lindo at the passing of Barb's brother Mike this past Wednesday, and the family of Earl Smith at his passing on Good Friday, and those whom we hold in our hearts before your throne of grace. Grant them healing in the midst of their pain, life in the midst of death, and finally hope with all the saints in the resurrection of all flesh. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dear Savior, you have walked with us the path of our Lenten journey and brought us at last to the feast of your glorious resurrection. For all these petitions and for whatever else you know that we need, we ask you, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. And now we conclude by singing hymn number 463, Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia.
Oh, my God. 